Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about, and this is not a brag, I wanna get that right off the bat, this is not a brag, I'm not bragging about anything. Um, I am fortunate to all of you, to everybody that has purchased this, but um, this video is about the fact that Codehawk, th this website I launched two and a half years ago, has now sold in over 85 countries. And that was as I counted a couple of weeks ago. So um, I'm, I'm very flattered about that, and I'm not bragging, but what I do want to talk about is just simply what I've learned in that process. So when it comes to actually launching this, I wrote the core code that makes this possible um, literally in like, I think it was about two months. And when I say two months, it was like working in the evenings, just a couple hours here and there, maybe eight hours a week at the most for about two months. And that was the core code. There are bugs. There are things that I need to fix with it. There are uh, you know, different things that I wanna do to expand this, but uh, there's more courses I wanna provide and all that. But I, the thing is, is this was a side project. So first and foremost, um, it was not a full-time effort. So I, I think that if you're looking to like try to start your own thing or whatever, like you don't have to actually have it be a full-time effort. You don't have to quit your job and do this. Like this is something I slowly built over it was two months initially for the code and then there was a lot of adaption after that uh and then there was like you know me adding more and more content and a couple of features here and there solving a couple of bugs here and there um it doesn't require like hardly any attention on my end um for the most part i mean i do get some emails every once in a while i have to respond to and i have somebody that i pay to do that what i've learned though is that you can do it you know what i mean you can do it and uh people told me i couldn't do it and like i mean i i just i i think that like you got to cut out the naysayers in your life you, there's going to be people in your life that are going to make you doubt yourself or try to make you doubt yourself and you simply can't i mean you got to try and strive for something and if you do it'll work and maybe it won't work the first time this isn't my first thing that I've ever tried to do. I've actually had websites where I tried to sell like digital photography. I spent three years on a website where I was trying to do uh, like movie reviews. I don't know why. <laughs> Looking back on it now, it's like one of the things that like that I do, I can tell you right off the bat, you have to be passionate about what it is that you're trying to do. Uh, because if you don't have the passion for it, like it's gonna, it's gonna creep out and it just simply won't work. I mean, one of the reasons why the YouTube thing worked is like I had a passion for teaching people and I was also learning myself and I got genuine enjoyment out of YouTube and I, I've continued to do it. And I know that I, you know, went on record and I said I was going to quit like end of last year and then I kind of didn't. And I, I went like 60 days or something like that without doing any content and even then started slowly and all that. But I do like and enjoy YouTube. And that's one of the reasons why it works because I, I enjoy doing it. Uh, but if you try to do something simply for the money or you think it's a hot industry or whatever, it's it, it's probably not going to work. And I've tried to jump into stuff, including like um, when Indiegogo and Kickstarter and all that were like first coming out. That was uh, another field that I like I jumped into, like crowdsourcing, thinking that, oh, it's this new hot market. I'm going to jump into that and um, somehow make money or be an entrepreneur in that. And like and my biggest piece of advice is that if you don't, have passion then you won't have staying power and it simply won't work the second piece of advice is that yeah you don't listen to anybody around you even people that you're close to that might try to make you doubt yourself because if you don't try you're never going to know and i'm not trying to act like this is like some huge success or i've made millions of dollars or anything like that but 85 countries like i'm, I'm flattered by that yeah a lot of that has to do with the fact that i'm on youtube but I suppose if you look at courses I've sold on other platforms and stuff like that, it's probably way more than 85 countries. I mean, I would imagine somewhere around 50,000 people have, have purchased uh, my courses in one way or another. And then there's millions that have consumed them on YouTube as well. So is wasn't an easy process. It definitely wasn't. I started a company a long time ago, and this the company I started a while ago is like a tech media media company. And it just took over what CodeHawk is. So really it just controls now these days, just CodeHawk and then my YouTube. And that includes like sponsor deals, like any sponsor deals I've, I've done. I've done sponsor deals with multi-billion dollar companies, like uh, at least 10 to 15 multi-billion dollar companies. And yeah, I'm not making millions on those sponsor deals. In fact, to the point where I don't even bother 
with these sponsors. I get sponsors that reach out to me almost on a, like at least on a weekly basis. And I don't respond to any of them. I just don't have time for that anymore. One of my favorite sponsors was Linode because we had like a true business connection and probably Dev Mountain too, because um, the same thing. It was just like, I was close with the higher ups up there and there wasn't a whole lot of back and forth. And, and that's really what I'm looking for in my life. This is still a, a hobby side project. YouTube is still a hobby side project. I don't have time for any of this back and forth negotiation nonsense. So that would probably be my next piece of advice is that when you look for what can I do, what value can I add, what can I produce, um, you got to keep in mind the amount of overhead that you're taking on, whether it's like the expenses of running the website or the expenses of time when it comes to how often are you going to have to respond, how often are you going to have to like be checking things. For me, I couldn't actually start a business where I had to be involved every day, all day long because I have a full time job and that's like my priority is my full-time job. So I need something that is not going to require my time and attention all the time. And I think the combination of YouTube and some of my failed web projects, and then now this one um, has really, it's like the perfect blend in my opinion. So what does it take to do that? I mean, if you're gonna start a business like in the United States, every state is different. You have to initially establish your business and you have to register it in whatever state that you're in. And then in addition to that, you have to get a federal tax ID number that you get with your IRS. And then you also, you take that and then you start a business bank account with that federal tax ID. You purchase your domain, you write your code, you launch it on a, um, a platform that, that you feel comfortable with or your own. In most cases, you're probably going to choose something like Azure or AWS, but that's really all there is to it. And, um, well, that's not all there is to it, but that is like the gist of what it takes to get there though. One of the biggest problems with any sort of business idea is that you could launch a website. It could be the best, uh, best one out there. Like if it's a travel review website, maybe you got a better UI UX experience. Like you got more in, uh, insider data. The problem is though, is you can launch that website and never be found. And that's just the reality of search engine optimization and marketing, um, when you start getting involved in this type of stuff and you, and you look at like, what is it going to take for people to actually see this? Now, if you have a bunch of money, that's where the money comes in. So you hear about all these startups with uh, 10 million investment, hundred million investment, and this, that, and the other thing. And a lot of the times that's an absolute requirement in order to hit the ground running when it comes to a marketing perspective before somebody can eat your lunch. When Google was first getting started, one of their biggest uh, concerns was that Microsoft would get a hold of the um, potential cash cow that they were sitting on when it came to online ad, you know, ad, advertising search and all that. Um, so when they brought in their first CEO, that was like his biggest concern was like, we got to hit the ground running before Microsoft gets hold of this because once they do, they're going to come up with their own competing product. And you've seen that they've done that even to this day with like with Bing. And then like Apple has their own maps, you know, versus like Google maps and, and things like that. We, I remember MapQuest even before all that, but, uh, the point being though, is that somebody will come along and eat your lunch. Another person I know started a website and it was actually pretty good, but it was about like haunted houses and stuff like that. And, um, ultimately though, TripAdvisor ended up sort of like they incorporated that into their product. So like even a big established company, like I tried to start a movie website and any sort of uniqueness that I had to my movie website could easily be replicated by something like Rotten Tomatoes or IMDb, which is owned by Amazon and Rotten Tomatoes is owned by like Warner Brothers, which is owned by Viacom and on and on. Um, so you can get your lunch eaten with something like what I'm doing with CodeHawk. Uh, Pluralsight could come along and, tr you know, try to like, I, you know, I don't know, like, I mean, I, I'm not competing with Pluralsight. It's a multi-billion dollar company but they also can't really do anything about the fact that I'm selling my own self as my product. So maybe I can one day expand this and have other people provide content as well. I got to add more features. I got to do more courses. I got to update existing courses. I got to fix bugs, but that stuff will come in time. This is just a hobby project. I've learned a lot doing it though. I'm very flattered. I'm not bragging, but yeah, 85 countries, my biggest advice have passion and don't listen to the naysayers. 
If you're learning to code, I recommend you check out my website, CodeHawk.com. My courses are fast, to the point, without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Pluralsight and Udemy. One of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now, professionally. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.